Hi guys, it's Drew here and I'm here to do my top deck Tuesday video for this week. This week I am going to be talking about the deck that I have chosen to be on the top of my pile. And that is the Japadrice Tarot. Now, I don't always know how to pronounce this or spell it when I'm trying to write it on a, a document. But um, it's by Mino Japadrice. It's a... Uh, US Systems game deck, and I've mentioned before I love US Systems, and I really feel like it's one of the best, uh, better produced and presented decks that I've seen from US games. Uh, I'm trying to sort of do a little something a little bit different with my background today, so you will see my Morrigan altar there, and my camera is a bit fuzzy and the lighting's not so great, but that's okay. So, talking about the Japadris, can we just like have a look at this box to start with? And this is not an impressions video or a walkthrough, but if you'd like a walkthrough, I'm more than happy to do one about this deck. Uh, I just love the box. It was basically how it came into my life. Uh, I had been watching some videos from Larissa. Um, I'm, I, interesting, interesting little tidbit, my sister's name's Larissa, and it's very rare for me to ever hear somebody being called Larissa, so it was kind of a shock when she said her name to start with. Ramble, um, but I love her channel, I love how blunt she is, and I love how she really, uh, talks about her decks, and if she doesn't like her decks, she, you know, moves them on. But it was back when she was working with the Japadori's deck, I believe for DreamWork, because it was a few months ago, uh, uh, or something else she was working with it. But I do remember her video, and I remember her talking about this deck, and she would be talking about the uh, Nine of Winds. And I think it was where she was sharing some of her like stories as well, like her writing stories. And as a writer who loves to use my decks and I am currently working on, you know, creating my own, um, my purpose and my message and my business created around using tarot for creative writing and all that juicy good stuff, um, I was really intrigued because it was a deck that, like when I first saw it and how it came in, it was a deck that I didn't really think that I would ever buy. It was like, oh, that's pretty. That's kind of like really interesting. But then when she started reading about the card, I was like, yes, I really connect with this deck. I really do feel um, that it has such story potential. And it is so different. It, it was so different when it came into my life from a lot of other decks that I have been using. And... Um, I, I purchased it at my local uh, bookshop, well not local local but <laughs> in the city, TS Bookshop in Melbourne and uh, I have mentioned before I, had, I did pay quite a lot of money for this, uh, I think it ended up being about 50, 50 something dollars and then I went back home and I saw it online for 30 but um, when I picked it up it was what I needed and I needed that dramatic change because a lot of the decks that I did have or do have, uh, um, I like my dark decks. I I love that nitty gritty dark um, blood dragon, um, deviant moon labyrinth, that kind of deck. Like I, that was my home deck because that's how I guess I represent myself. Well, I feel like part of my representation is 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 in those decks, like my my blood. And this was a deck that came into my life that was so vibrant and lush and so full of colour and um, story and myth. And even though it doesn't talk about myth, I can see the myth underlaid. And I was really surprised because I had got the um, Tower of the She for Christmas as, uh, as a gift from my mum. And one of the most powerful parts about getting that deck in my life was that it was so vibrant. The colours are just so vibrant. And it woke something up in me and it continues to wake something up in me. I didn't realise how much colour affected my way of experiencing life and how 
I read into colour and how it reflects in symbology, how it reflects in the stories that I tell, um, the meaning in it. And I just loved the deck. I just had to have it. It was one of those times where I was like, I really feel like buying a deck. And, oh, what was the one I was going to buy? I was going to buy two. I was going to be a little bit impulsive and buy two, but I decided, no, $50 is enough for one deck. I think it was the uh, Wildwood, and I really wanted that one too. That is very closely on my next buy list. And it came in my life, and I, I was waiting for my then partner. Um, he was doing some stuff at uh, uni, RMIT uni. And I took it to, to my, my university library and I just sat and read the book. I just sat and read the guidebook and I connected so much with it. It was one of those rare occasions where I felt like I was immersed in the experience of um, the story of the major arcana as a whole, but just so different, so, so diverse to anything I'd ever experienced or played with. And so I wanted to show you guys some of that imagery as well, because it's a very important reason why it did come into my life. Uh, one of the topics that I know has been going around a lot um, in the tarot world is tarot decks that have diversity, not just white people. And I do agree. I never thought about it very much until this topic came up. But it makes sense because for me, I lived in the country and, uh, when I was growing up and sometimes lived in the city. But for primarily most of my life, I was around white English speaking people. And when we moved to Melbourne, we moved into a, an insane multicultural place where there is a, a variety of different nationalities and ethnicities and cultures that I've never seen or witnessed before in my life and I'm still learning. So this deck is a definite reflection of the time in my life where I am dealing with a lot of um, societal prejudice and you know stuff that was built up in my childhood with um, family and ideas and sort of my relations with um, different cultures. So this deck came at a really perfect time. And so I wanted to sort of show you a couple of cards that I do think reflect diversity and it's something that's really important in the story of how it's come into my life for that re for one of those reasons. So I'm just going to show you a few and you guys can tell me what you think as a reflection of diversity. And I'm sorry my camera is really quite hideous. Um, is the card that very often comes up for me. Again, my camera is really blurred, so definitely check out some of those images in person. So that was one of the reasons why I was glad that it came in, and it's part of the energy of the deck as well, which moves into the next question, what is the energy of this deck? I feel like this deck is a diverse, subliminal, um, surrealist, dreamy, subconscious deck. And I seem to be drawn to those decks as of you know, this year. Um, it's very interesting to watch my progress and my journey through tarot and what decks really sort of move into my body, move into my energy field, move into my working. And I say that the energy is diverse because of those images, but I also feel that it's very, and it is surrealist. It, it, it is described as surrealist and I don't have surrealist decks and I don't, I haven't ever really been exposed to surrealist art, but I have found a love and I love that dreamy, subconscious, sort of really astral, trippy almost, um, energy of this deck. You can kind of see some of the influences of artists that have come through um, as well. And I'm not a, I'm not an artist in I, I just don't I'm not an expert at all. I'm not even a novice 
in um, art, but it just feels like I've seen these things before and they're collectively in my mind. But she brings them to the surface in such a unique way. And I don't, like, the energy of this is, is when, I, when I first look at these cards, I think, oh, dear God, this is so chaotic and there's nothing there for me to grab. But the beauty of it is that it's, it means that I have to look like up here um, at the top there I never really thought anything much of this until I saw it and thought you know what that looks like a genie's lamp which is really interesting considering it's the, the priestess card so it's an awakening deck it has the it has the energy of awakening something that you don't usually get in normal decks and I, I do believe it follows the same there's a few like um, titles that have changed but it's you know it is sort of right away but it's not at the same time it's the artist has taken her own liberties at exploring it and I believe from what I've read um, she doesn't quite know everything about the tarot but it, uh, it was a process for her in finding out and creating things uh, with the deck as well and I love the world card that to me is very um, emotional and sea sea witchy and deep it feels like you know you're diving at the bottom of an ocean your own unconscious your own consciousness um, emotion and I just find that to be really really incredibly powerful so the deck has that hook it has a hooking energy where it is very open to in your own interpretation and I really enjoy that in the decks that I'm exploring at the moment where I've realized that um, there is a lot to work with and it's also pushing me to look at different things outside of tarot like outside of tarot um, art different ways of thinking different ways of drawing and looking at things because I do tend to draw sometimes um, when I'm feeling incredibly emotional, I tend to, and I can't write because I've got something simmering here that needs time to settle, I like to draw and I love to use these as um, focal points and I'll, I'll look at the cards and then I'll draw something and I won't draw something like trace it or draw from the cards, I will just see what comes through from just observing the colors and the textures and the emotions that come through and then I'll create my own work which I think is really powerful as well when you are an artist to be able to really appreciate a different form a different meaning and make it your own I also like the elemental sweets because they're very simplistic and yet they hold a lot to them and it does have a very earthy very grounded um grounded in self and divinity and as above and so below and everywhere in between look very otherworldly as well so i really love those i love all this the, all the cards but <laughs> i love a lot i love a lot <laughs> of this deck so that's definitely the energy of it you you can just go so deep with this deck and I just isn't that just stunning like isn't that just stunning just beautiful and so we're moving on to the next question is um, what have you been using it for now I put it away for a few weeks but I can't again I can't keep too far from this deck because it's just every time I think about it it calls me back but I have been using it to plot out stories my novel and I had some amazing experience with plotting out stories um, I had an idea of some of the things that needed to be corrected or I, think, I hate the word corrected it makes me feel like I'm back in school and yeah um, I am in school but it, it uh, I was working on like figuring out what I need to write in my second draft of my novel and so for every scene I would draw a card and I would see where the character or the scene or the location or um, a part of the story needed to be worked on and I use these cards to figure out what needed to be worked on 
first with the meanings in the book while I was looking at the cards and they were just so beautifully um, in sync. And I really love this deck for that because every time I tend to do readings with it, it's incredibly in sync. And I, I mean, I do have some decks that I just, I'm not in sync with, I have to really work with. But this really speaks to a part of me that is conflicted, that is confused, that is fragmented. And I love the abstract art of it. I love that. I love this sort of stuff. And I never thought I would. I just truly, this is one of the greatest gifts of using this deck for me so far, is that when I have been using it and what I have been using it for, you know, daily draws, um, some spreads, some working on connecting with my characters and guides and whatnot, I do feel like I'm opening up a part of myself that doesn't come through in other areas of my art or ways of expression and I am a fragmented person. I do have multiple um, characters inside me. I do have multiple um, personas, I guess you can say, that come out in certain areas, as everybody does, but I, I definitely find that this is a chance to explore those different personas in a safe, sacred beautiful and sometimes ugly way. I just did not realise that there was a rainbow on that. Isn't that beautiful? And that's what I've been using them for. A little bit of reflection, a little bit of meditating, as I mentioned. Just to find a different voice in, in amongst um, the tarot world and the creative world. And I think this deck goes really well with um, the creative tarot, the modern, the modern guide to creative tarot by Jess uh, Crispin. For some reason, those two came into my life around about the same time, and she has a very uh, different approach to tarot and art and expressing and creativity, and these just seem to sort of blend with her philosophy too which I quite enjoy because it's sort of a different way to experience even uh, the meanings of the cards. And so lastly, because I'm a little bit out of breath today, um, where would you like to take your relationship next? Well, I'm going to be taking it uh, with me tomorrow to go and enjoy a really nice experience with one of my really good friends. But this week, and because it is the deck I'm using this week, it is going to be used a lot with grief work. A lot with assessing where I am in my life on the external and internal. I have a lot going on right now in my um, both my parts of my life, inner and outer. And I needed a deck that would allow me to have that creativity to go and fan and visit the fantasy spaces and um, draw upon colour and draw upon different lands and worlds but still offer me some sort of guided um, messages because it's a very intuitive deck for me it's incredibly intuitive and I want to work with um, shadow work so grief and shadow work, I guess they go hand in hand sometimes with me. That's my main relationship goal with this deck. But I want to get to know it as well. I want to have fun with it because I feel like sometimes if you, and I have experienced this, what I've been learning with um, the series so far and actually working with my decks, is that sometimes when you put too much pressure on using a deck for a certain thing and not letting it just um, be as it is, it can become... Um, the energy can become attached to it and that's what you see it as but I want to have fun with this deck because this deck is fun to me this deck is crazy ass fun and I just I just love it and yes I have trimmed it <laughs> I do not like white borders like I do not like the white border and I, I trimmed it enough that you can actually appreciate like the back it looks very nice this, again, like Fortune. This is like one of the best Fortune um, cards that I have ever seen because it's so, like the chips are all fragmented and there's so many um, ways that you can look at it. And it almost feels psychedelic in a way. And it feels very, you know, in 80s, 90s as well. 
and I love Death Card. And so, yeah, I just, I can't wait to talk to you guys more about this deck throughout the week because I have so much to say about it, so much I want to explore as well. And it will be interesting to see how um, I use it as a tool for grieving, as a tool for understanding what's going on in my psyche at the moment. And recovery, it's definitely a deck for me um, that is about recovery because it is so colourful and I'm just really intrigued. And I also love some of her other art that isn't related to the deck itself. Uh, I'm finding that I'm really, really connecting with her style, her message, her, um, her choices in presenting certain topics. So thank you guys for watching. I love you all. And uh, let me know what you think of this deck if you've been using it. And I will chat to you all later. Bye.